Okay, I would like to revisit with you um, conductors that are in electrostatic equilibrium. So now we're talking about any conductors, so metals usually, um, that where the charge is no longer moving. It's, it's done its moving, and, and now it's in electrostatic equilibrium. So the charges are, not, are no longer moving. Okay, there's, there's six things I want you to know about conductors that are in that situation. Okay, number one is I would like you to understand that the electric field is zero at all points inside the metal. Okay, and we've gone over that with Gauss's law. So there is no electric field inside the metal. If there was, then the charges would would move. And so the fact that there that the charges aren't tells you that there's no field in there. The excess charge resides on the metal surfaces. So the excess charge will not be inside the metal, but will re reside on the outside. I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. Number three, the E just outside the metal, the electric field just outside the metal, will equal this very simple equation, sigma, which is the charge per area, the local sigma, which is the charge per area, over epsilon naught. That epsilon naught is, you know, the, the same epsilon naught that was in Gauss's law. I will prove that using Gauss's law in a little bit. Okay, the other one, the, the other um, three, is the electric field, just the direction of the electric field just outside the metal will be normal to the surface. So the electric field lines, they always leave normal to the surface, perpendicular, in other words, to the surface. And uh, they, they can not be perpendicular later on, but when they just leave in the surface, they, they're going to be perpendicular to that surface. Okay, um, and five, all the points on the metal and inside the metal will be the same potential. Uh, that's kind of the same as number one. And the reason for that is um, charges will flow from, positive charges flow from the higher potential to the lower potential. Okay, and if charges flow from, if they tend to flow from the higher potential to the lower potential, then if you have a metal and one part of the metal is at a high potential and the other part's at a low, then the charges will flow. So if it's in equilibrium, the potential difference, the potential at any point should be the same as any other point in the metal. Otherwise, the charges would flow. And then this last one's long. I'm going to give you a list of these, a, a handout of these, so you, you don't have to worry about copying this all down. Um, you just need to know what it all means. So the surface charge density, sigma, will be greater at the sharper areas on, on the metal. So any sharp points on the metal, you're going to have more sigma than at the areas with less curvature. So therefore, the electric field strength will be greatest just outside the sharpest points on the metal. Okay, so right outside the sharpest points, that's where the that's where the electric field strength will be greatest. And I'll tell you, I'll talk more about this in a little bit. All right, so um, let me just uh, then cover why charges reside on the outsides of metals, or not inside the metal at least. So that's the second one. I'm going to tell you what, what that's all about. So excess charges reside on the metal surfaces. So imagine we have a hollow metal sphere here. Oh no, I'm, see, I'm sorry, a solid metal sphere. So this is solid metal. And the charge... What I want to convince you is that the charge, when you dump it on here, it all hangs out on the outside. And here's why. Here's the argument that says it does. Um, if I take and draw a Gaussian surface in here, I'll make it really close to the edge of the metal. Okay, now the electric field right here, right at that point, and right here, and right here, that's zero. So how much electric flux is going through there? The net electric flux is equal to zero because the E right here is zero. So there can't be any flux. And so therefore the Q enclosed by the Gaussian surface over epsilon naught must be zero. So the Q enclosed in here has to be zero 
the net charge enclosed has to be zero. And so that's why the charges always hang out on the outsides. I mean, that's the argument that says that they do, at least. Okay, now I'd like to convince you of number three. E just outside the metal is equal to sigma local over epsilon naught. Okay, to, to show you this, imagine that you have a, a metal, and I'm only going to draw one part of it. So let's say that um, we have some, some weird shaped metal here. Okay, this is the this is the inside of, this is the inside of the metal. That's just some weird shaped blob of metal, and um, the charge is hanging out on the outsides of the metal, or at the surface of the metal. And um, there's some local charge density, say right here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to circle this area, right there, and I'm going to blow it up so that you can see it. So that's a big blown up area. It's really a little area we're talking about right there. So that is is there. So let me show you that this is the that's that area coming down. And we got charge in here. But this is the metal. And this is air out here. This is air. And um the charge is only hanging out on the surface of this metal right here. And um, I'm going to tell you that the local charge density, surface charge density, is sigma L. So the, it's like the local population. You know how the population of the United States isn't, isn't uniform, but like it, there's more people in the cities? Well, same thing with this metal. There's got, it's got a local population density. Okay, let's find the field right here. To find the field right there, I'm going to draw a cylindrical Gaussian surface. I should dot it because this is just a this is just a cylinder that's made up in our minds. Okay, and we have uh, there is no flux coming out the sides of this. The electric field is perpendicular to the to the to the to the conductor, so there's no flux coming out the sides of that cylinder. Uh, there's no flux coming out the bottom of that cylinder, this bottom part, because there's no E in here. E is equal to zero in here. Um, so the only place where there's flux coming out is, is that top area. The only place where there's charge is this area. Now that cross-sectional, that circular cross-sectional area is the same size as this cross-sectional area. Okay, so let's apply Gauss's law. Q enclosed in this Gaussian surface is just going to be the local sigma times that A. So it's the local sigma times that area. That's how much charge is enclosed over epsilon naught. That's equal to the closed surface integral of E dot dA. Now the only place we have flux is here, and the dA's are all in the same direction as A. Or the dA's are all in the same direction as E. So we can pull, we can get rid of the dot product. And then you see how E is the same at every point on here. Why would we expect it to be greater here than here than here than here? As long as we're close, these lines aren't diverging yet if we're really close to the conductor. And so the E, you can pull it out of the integral. And when you add up all the DAs, you get... You get E times A. Now these A's, this A out here is this one, and this A right here is the cross-sectional area, but they're the same, so I'm going to cancel them. And so the E, just outside of a conductor, is equal to the local charge density, sigma L, all over epsilon naught. This is the E just outside, just outside a conductor. Okay, um, I'm going to need a whole nother video to take care of the other parts to um, the six things I listed for you. Okay, see you in a bit.